Hey everyone, it's Jordan from Fish Keeping Made Easy and today I'm going to give you my top 50 beginner fish. Now, I was going to do sort of like a top 15 or top 20, but the more I just thought about it during the day, the more fish I kept thinking of. So I thought, why not? Let's just do a massive list. Just a quick disclaimer, not every single one of these fish is ideal for your first fish. Some of these are introductory fish into certain species of fish. So like, we'll talk about dwarf cichlids, we'll talk about puffers, things like that. So just what I would recommend as someone as a beginner to get into those as well. But obviously we're gonna talk about fish that I would advise for your first fish too. Now, I'm not gonna go into too much detail on every single fish as that would end up being an hour long video. So I'm just gonna quickly go over some of the basic care requirements for them. This video is just to give you sort of an idea of some fish that you could keep fish that you've maybe never heard of before and fish that you've seen and thought, oh, I thought they were actually a lot more difficult to care for when actually they're not at all. Fish number one. Well, I guess we have to start with the ultimate beginner fish, the guppy. Now, guppies are great because they come in all different colors and different patterns. So they kind of suit any sort of scape and any sort of design people are going for. However, guppies do breed quite easily. So for beginners, I would recommend just keeping males, but if you want to sort of breed them, I would keep maybe two males to four, five, six females. That way you've got the females not getting harassed so much. I would add a couple of males and a few females every so often to keep that gene pool deep as you don't want any sort of hills have eyes situation with your uh, guppies. Number two. The Endler Guppy. Now, personally, I prefer the Endler Guppy to the actual Guppy. They're slightly smaller, so they have a smaller bio load. They still come in loads of cool colors, although the female is basically just a kind of bland guppy. Um, but you can mix them with female guppies and make some weird sort of combinations if you wanted to breed them. But other than that, they'll eat absolutely anything and they're pretty solid. Another thing to suggest with the guppies and the Endler guppies is that you can actually find these relatively cheap. In fact, if you know some people who keep guppies, they probably have loads of fry that they would give you for free. Number three, the cherry barb. Now the cherry barb I'm recommending because one, it's super hardy. Two, it can go in sort of temperate water. So it can go down to about 18, 19 degrees. They are temperate fish, but the disclaimer I'll have here is with temperate fish, you still want to maybe have a heater because you want to keep the temperature as steady as you possibly can. You don't want it going up to like 23, 24 when you've got your radiators on and then dropping down to about 14, 15 degrees overnight. So I would always recommend keeping any temperate tanks in a room that is regularly used. So don't keep them in a spare bedroom keep them in a living room or a bedroom or somewhere that gets a lot of activity and a lot of heat. The cherry barbs, they look really cool. They're super hardy and yeah, just a great fish. Again, the males are a bright red color. The females are a little bit duller, but they're still both cool regardless. Fish number four, the glow light Daniel. Now the glow light Daniel, like the cherry barb, can go in a temperate setup so it can go in colder water. It has a really, really cool pattern on it. And again, they're just super hardy. They'll eat absolutely anything and are great for beginner fish. Number five, the green neon tetra. Now I would recommend the green neon tetra just as an alternative to the neon tetra. It's a little bit sleeker and it has a cool sort of green shimmer along it. It's got basically the same care requirements as the neon tetra. I have heard people suggesting that they are slightly hardier than neon tetras, but green neon tetra, great alternative to that. So I would definitely recommend them. Number six is one of my favorite fish, the gold barb. Now the gold barb was one of the first fish I ever had. Um, I don't personally have any anymore as I gave them to my father-in-law, but he does have a couple of my gold barbs that are at least six or seven years old. So these fish are extremely hardy. Just beware that they get sold quite small, so they're maybe only a couple of centimeters, but they can grow up to 12, 13 centimeters, and they do get quite big and have quite a big bio load. Other than that, they have really cool colors. If they're really healthy, they get sort of a green shimmer in with that yellow, and they get some red around their fins. Number seven is the betta fish, or the Siamese fighting fish. Now, I would recommend these as beginner fish for a few reasons. One, they come in loads of different cool colors. Two, they're pretty hardy. Three, they have a labyrinth organ, which means that they can actually breathe oxygen from the air. So if anything goes really, really wrong in your tank, they can 
kind of breathe. It will still affect their gills, but they are really, really hardy. They're perfect for little kids as well, because especially for like little girls, if you're getting a tank for your daughter or even for your wife, because you can get these really nice pink bettas. They're all flowing. They look like little princess dresses. So yeah, and you have all these different kinds of ones. The ones you can see here is a koi betta, which is my betta, koi boy. Um, but you get them in loads of different colours, loads, of, and there's different varieties of them as well. There's wild bettas and things like that, which are a little bit different, but there's loads of different bettas. A lot of people actually get into collecting bettas, so whatever you're looking for, you can get it. Number eight is the Honey Grammy. Now, the Honey Grammy is a better alternative to the Dwarf Grammy, which we will talk about later. They are a little bit more peaceful. They can be kept in groups, they can be kept in pairs. They come in, they're called Sunset Grammys as well because they have nice reds, oranges, um, pink colors. So you get a lot of different colorations on them and they're actually quite easy to breed as well. Just like the Beta, they also have a labyrinth organ. So that kind of helps. Um, they, well, they need access to the surface as well. Other than that, they'll eat absolutely anything. Really easy to care for fish. Definitely recommend for someone who wants a little bit bigger fish than a nano fish, but maybe wants to keep it in a small aquarium. Number nine is the checker barb or checkerboard barb or the island barb. It goes by quite a few names. Now these fish are really actually quite cool. The males go quite a dark color. You might have never seen them before in your fish shop because I don't really think they stick out as much. But if you really look at them and their patterns, they're actually really, really cool. I would recommend them for anyone because just like every other barb, they're super hardy. They can go in cooler waters as well. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more mysterious, a little bit more different, definitely try the checkered barb. Number 10 is the Cardinal Tetra. Now the Cardinal Tetra has a much brighter red color than the Neon Tetra. So if you're looking for something that pops a little bit more, I would recommend them. A lot of people say they're not as hardy as the Neon Tetras and the other Tetras, but I've never had a problem with them in the past. Never had a problem with them in any of the shops that I've worked in. Super hardy, same care guide as the Green Neon Tetra. Definitely recommend. Number 11 is the Zebra Danio. Now the Zebra Danio, again, is super hardy, just like the Glow Light Danio. There's not much difference in their care requirements. Um, just a different kind of pattern. So if you've got a cold water setup or even a tropical setup, you can definitely have these. Number 12 is the bristle nose plec. Now this is the only plec I have on my list because I don't want to go into L number plecs as they can get a little bit expensive, but there are quite a few and they might be in part two. So like the video and subscribe for part two. But bristle nose plecs, Really good at eating leftover stuff. They'll eat algae, they'll eat food, they'll eat absolutely anything. I would recommend having them in nothing less than sort of 75, 80 litres as they do create quite a mess. But you do get loads of different colours of them. You get different alternatives. I had a gold one, but you get these blue eyed gold ones that are really, really cool. And you also get sort of brown ones with spots and black ones and all these different colours. So I definitely recommend them for your first click. The Rosy Barb. Rosy Barbs. Really cool, again, just like a lot of the other barbs, they can go in cooler water, they'll eat absolutely anything. And just a quick disclaimer, all these fish that I'm talking about are schooling fish. I would recommend keeping them in at least a group of about six, but the more the merrier. 14 is the Giant Daniel. The Giant Daniel is an awesome looking fish. If you have a bigger cold water setup, I would definitely recommend this fish. Number 15, the Rummy Nose Tetra. Now, just like the other Tetras, the care guides are all realistically exactly the same. They don't really have much of a care requirement other than they need fed and they need to be in a heated tank of about 24, 25 degrees. Rummy Nose Tetras have got that cool red on the end of their nose, which is where they get their name from. So they are a cool alternative to the Neon Tetra. Again, they grow slightly bigger, so I wouldn't have them in a nano tank and they like to sort of dart around. So again, a slightly larger tank, maybe 75 to 100 litres, a group of maybe 10 to 12 of these would look absolutely awesome. Number 16, the Rainbow Shiner. Rainbow Shiners are the coolest looking cold water fish you can actually get. They need fast flowing water. So having sort of like a, you could have them in with giant Danios, um, another few Danios, some other kind of shiners. The rainbow shiners, the males look absolutely incredible, um, especially when they're spawning. They just look so cool. In the UK, you can't really get many North American fish. So this is definitely one I would recommend if you see it. Slightly pricier, but they are super hardy. And yeah, we had them in Fish Keeper and I think we, the CO2 like just totally malfunctioned. They were all lying on their backs. We thought they were all dead. And 
uh, within sort of half an hour of doing a water change, they were back at it again and no issues whatsoever. Um, amazing fish. Now we're gonna take a break from fish for a second for number 17 and number 18. So number 17 is the Amano shrimp. Now Amano shrimp are awesome because they eat absolutely anything and they're just super hardy. With shrimp, the only issue is kind of transferring them from the shop to your tank at home. It's better to acclimate them in a sort of drip acclimation scent. So I would put them into a bucket and I would probably pour a little bits of water in every so often, give them maybe like 45 minutes to an hour to acclimatize rather than doing the whole sort of bag thing. Either way, once they're in the tank, they'll do amazing. The only issue with mano shrimp is they have a really difficult reproductive system, so they won't just breed in your actual tank. They need to have brackish water and all this kind of thing. So it's not really gonna work that well. That's why number 18, the cherry shrimp might be a better alternative for you. They come in loads of different colors. Cherry shrimp is just a sort of common name for them because a lot of the time you'll find the red ones, but they are Neo Caradina and they come in like reds, blues, greens, browns, yellows, any color under the rainbow, they have that. Um, if you do mix the colors, you do get kind of a, what people would call wild type, which is a sort of browny, greeny, blacky color. But again, they're still really awesome and your fish won't see them. So the fry, well, the, the shrimplets will be able to sort of swim away, no bother. Number 19 is one of my favorite nano fish and that's the Ember Tetra. Now Ember Tetras are just these bright red, tiny Tetras. Again, no real care requirements. They can go in with anything. A lot of people put them in with bettas. They're really good to go in there. I would keep any of these little smaller nano fish in bigger groups of like 10 to 12 rather than six because they feel a lot more comfortable like that. But the Ember Tetra, I definitely recommend for beginners. Number 20 is another awesome little tiny nano fish and, and red as well. And that is the Chili Raspora. Chili Raspora is absolutely awesome. You got to watch because they do kind of sell them as exclamation point Rasporas, which we'll talk about later. They aren't as nice in a color, but Chili Rasporas, they don't really have much of a care requirement. You just want to maybe feed them a much smaller food and they do kind of like little live foods, like baby brine shrimp and things like that. So you might want to get a little bit more of a range of foods for them, but definitely recommend for beginners. Number 21, we're back with the live baiters. That's the platy. Platies are probably a lot of people had them as their first fish. I've never personally kept them, but they are pretty awesome, easy to breed. They'll eat absolutely anything. And depending on what kind you get, some can go in sort of cooler waters, but again, super hardy, you're not gonna have many issues with them. Number 22 is the Otto Synclus. Now, I've never had great success with Otto Synclus. They are all wild caught, so like a mano shrimp and the cherry shrimp, it's all about the transferring them from one tank to another is when stuff can go wrong. If you can successfully just sort of, they acclimate successfully to your tank, they'll live forever. But <laughs> in between that time, it can be a little bit more difficult but they are a great nano algae eater and I would recommend them for anyone to try, but just bear in mind that if they die, it's maybe not your fault, it's just they're not great at acclimating. Number 23, the Neon Tetra. Now we've already kind of discussed the Neon Tetra all the way through this. So again, it's just the same care requirements as the Cardinal and the Green Neon Tetra. Number 24 is the Diamond Tetra. Now the Diamond Tetra is a really cool looking silver fish. It's a little bit bigger. Again, the same kind of general care requirements as all the other Tetras, but I would definitely recommend this fish if you want something a little bit sparkly and something a little bit different. Number 25, the Peppered Cory. Basically the ultimate beginner Cory. Cory's will eat absolutely anything. The only thing with Cory's is you want to make sure you don't have sharp gravel or sharp rocks as they can sort of damage their barbels, which in turn can sort of create bacteria infections and things like that. But if you have a nice soft sand, they're perfect as a bottom feeder. Always make sure you're putting in things like bloodworms and making sure you are target feeding them so they aren't just left sort of you know, they, they don't really eat algae as, you know, like an autosynclus wood or a bristlenose plec wood in the background. They're more looking for direct food in the sand, so just be aware of that. Mm -hmm.